In today's episode of Mailbox Mondays, we're revisiting a product which we bought quite a few months ago. The Riot 240 pound wheel set from AliExpress. Things have not gone smoothly. The set that I bought have been okay. The first ride, they went out of true a tiny, tiny little bit as all the spokes clicked into place. But on the whole, they've ridden smoothly. I've probably ridden about 1000K on them and taken them on a couple of cycling events as well. They've been an okay, but quite heavy carbon wheel set. And they look nice. But a few weeks after posting the video about these, I had a message from a guy called Pierre. He said he bought some because the price is really low. He didn't expect anything. On first glance, the wheel set looked really nice, rode it for like 150K and noticed some strange noises all of the time. Thought it might've been something settling. Yesterday, I noticed my front wheel bulged on a specific spot near the valve. See the video here. The front wheel has three of these spots. One which specifically bulges while riding. We asked Pierre if he'd send us the wheel. And he said yes. So here's Pierre's wheel. Uh, it's definitely this section of the rim here, the little dashes he's put on. That bit there is like sponge. I could, I, I could push through that if I wanted to. I'd end up with a lot of carbon in my fingers, which I don't want. But that, that I could get through if I wanted to. There's a smaller one there as well. It's basically, this section is just soft. How does this compare to your one then? Oh, it's like a different product. It's weird, isn't it? It's so different. That's like solid. It's, it's like a different product. That's really light pressure and you can see it warping. I'm gonna apply what feels like a comparable amount of pressure on your set of rims. It's a little bit of give there, but it, it just feels different. I'm that, that's, that's a different product. I find this really strange. We both bought these wheels from the Riot official store on AliExpress. What is that? Why is it making that noise? So after I got the message from Pierre, I sent the video that he sent me to our friend Dov, who's the founder of Parkour Wheels. He knows a lot about carbon wheel manufacturing and he replied saying, do not ride that wheel. He said it looks like a sign of poor manufacture. Either it's a low grade resin that hasn't bonded, insufficient internal pressure in the bladder or mandrel while curing or rushed cooling post cure. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I know that this is a Stanley blade, but I don't think I should be able to do this. That doesn't seem okay to me. Well, that bit's all right though. It's very much this bit. This bit is like paper. Did you speak to them about it? Pierre spoke to the sellers on AliExpress and they agreed to replace the wheel after he sent them a video of the noise, but he had to pay for postage, which cost 70 euros. It's a lot of money. It's even a big percentage of the original price of the wheel. So I don't know if that was fair. He now has a replacement wheel, which works the same as mine. It doesn't make any noises. It's just a okay carbon wheel. But I don't think it inspires much peace of mind. I'm nervous to ride mine now. Finally, I personally messaged the same seller on AliExpress. I told them a member of our audience has sent us a riot wheel, which when purchased, had delaminated and it's making a creaking noise. And I told them that we were gonna be covering this in a video on YouTube. And they just said, friend, could you please send us a video and photo? Have a check, thanks. We will solve the problem for you if our product has a problem. So sorry that troubled you. I then got a series of promo codes and adverts sent to me in the chat. I then sent them a link to a photo of the damaged wheel from Pierre. And they finally replied a couple of days later saying they'd check things through and can I send them a video of the damage? I think if I carried on chatting with them, they would offer us the same thing as they offered Pierre, but they haven't given us a comment regarding QC or if the wheels are checked properly or anything like that. QC passed. Hmm. In most cases, the products that come out of China are as good as the products coming out of any other manufacturer. Even the big brand manufacturers will have these issues that come out of their production. It's just what happens. The challenge is how good is the QC? Is the QC good enough that bad products don't get to the end user? And then the final challenge is if you do end up with a duff product, how is it being resolved? And I've said previously on videos, and I stand by it, the actual only reason that I wouldn't buy products directly from China is because to me, warranty is important. If I'm buying a pair of wheels from Dovet Parkours or Zip 
or whoever else, I know that I'm going to be able to walk into a bike shop or phone up Dov, partly because he's my mate, and I'm going, this wheel's knackered, what are you going to do about it? And it's going to get fixed. This is not a good enough response. It's bad. I would never buy these wheels. I do want to stress for that though, that this is not an opportunity to be racist and then say that all Chinese manufacturing is crap because that isn't the case. These anomalies happen and it's about how good or not good the QC and the warranty is. Chinese businesses are not rubbish. Some of them do not have the method of dealing with these def def defects and issues in our geographical location. So don't blame Chinese businesses, just blame this business and don't buy from them. <laughs> this next section is an announcement as well as a section. We have both been buying and using products from a brand called Silka for many years. They do make a big variety of random stuff, don't they? Really Looking random at the stuff. pile of stuff down there. Like weird stuff. <laughs> the, ma the main reason we even know they exist is it all comes down to frame pumps. I used frame pumps forever and I wanted, when I had this hand illustrated bike that was absolutely stunning, I wanted to get a really premium, over the top, beautiful frame pump to go along with that bike. So I got on a sale, a Silka frame pump, and I was over the moon with it and I showed you and you were like, I have to get one as well. And then we became obsessed with Silka frame pumps, but never bought any more because they are very expensive. They've ended up featuring in loads of videos over the last few years and we ended up speaking to the company and they, as of today, are now an official sponsor of K Media. It was actually the start of last month, but it's, it's fine. We've we've had them sat there for ages. Yeah, we're getting around to it now. The founder of Silka, Josh, which actually I think probably a lot of you YouTube people will know because he has featured on lots of things talking about drive chain efficiency. And tire efficiency. He used to do engineer stuff for Zip. Oh, did he? So we have a load of boxes here, which we are going to unbox because that's what we do on Mailbox Monday. Sicaro titanium bottle cages in gold. They're very light, aren't they? Do not take out my laptop. That weighs 32 grams. That is 95 euros currently discounted on their website to 76. That is furiously expensive, but it's very nice, isn't it? You have to exclusively use Fidlock, so these are now mine. <laughs> Synergetic oil-based lube. Oh, this is the lube. This is the chain lube that I use all the time. This okay. is the one I take bike packing. Allegedly, this has stuff in it, which means it extends the life of your drivetrain compared, to, like significantly compared to a normal chain lube. Well, I can, I can give you some numbers if you want. But not as much as wax, apparently. Up to 50% reduction in friction and 90% reduction in wear. Compared to Ultra what? Ultra long distance. Sand. Butter. This stuff is 30 euros, currently discounted to 22.50. You, 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 you vouch for this stuff. I, that's the only chain lube I use. Sick. The Matone, Matone, Matone? Matone. Matone, oh Matone. 60 euros, currently discounted to 45 euros. Uh, so, oh that's kind of cool. So it's got a little pouch, so you can put like a bank card in. Nice touch of the Silka logo, a bit of extra space there. And then presumably it wraps around your seat rails and then fixes on the other side with a boa which has a very nice fetching red cable. A boa I'm assuming was initially designed for shoes and it's a, like a ratchet, a cable ratchet system for being able to release and tighten a shoe to whatever thing you like and then presumably because it's such a cycling product certain brands have started integrating boas into other products like seat packs. This has 71 reviews, which all say five stars. What? Next up, we have got something which we have been avoiding talking about since our podcast chat that we had before. Chain waxing stuff. Neither me and Jimmy have ever waxed a chain properly. Silka has sent us everything we need to be able to do it. So they have these chain stripper stuff, which will clean an oily chain or a brand new chain with the packing grease and stuff on it, completely clean. And then they've given us some hot melt wax stuff and the super secret wax based lube, which is like a chain lube that you add on top of a wax chain when it needs replenishing instead of re-waxing the whole chain with your hot pan stuff. Hot melt wax chain lubricant with nanoscale tungsten technology. 
Can I see the backer? It's weird, right? What the? The cool Jimmy pile. This is the best thing here. I think this is one each of the best frame pump in the world ever. This is the 2.0. The version we have is one. I'm expecting big things. <laughs> The Impero Ultimate 2.0. It's a different finish to the first one, isn't it? Yeah. It's shiny instead of matte. This pump fits beautifully on a frame. It looks gorgeous. You can get it painted if you want to paint it. It can pump tires up to really high pressure. I don't know what the official amount is, but I don't generally go over 60 PSI anyway. But very efficiently, you can pump a tire up properly high and it just looks beautiful. I've used Toe Peak top tube pumps for a long time, longer than I've used the Silka pump. They are unbelievably cheap. You can get them for like 15, 20 quid and they work, they pump up tires as good as these. However, the internals of them are not as good as these. It will fill with water and eventually it will leak rusty stuff on your bike, assuming you use your bike in things other than perfect conditions. However, my Silka pump has never, ever, ever done that. I don't know if it's because it's made of stainless, perhaps. This version two of the pump is actually 120 euros on the Silka website, reduced currently to 96 euros. So it's significantly cheaper than the first version. We have the Hirabel Frame Clamp Universal Repair Stand Mount. What's that? It's a Universal Repair Stand Mount, obviously. Oh! <laughs> Is this for real? <laughs> so you effectively strap this to your frame with nice, soft, supple, plasticky. You fix this to here. Done this the wrong side, by the way. Yeah! And then you can clamp your frame in a bike stand without having to clamp it on any of the lovely, expensive carbon parts. <laughs> So that's a very clever, well-made product that no one needs. That's actually the kind of thing that I could imagine Nick having in the shop. Because we actually, we rebuilt this specific bike the other day. We lost the seat clamp, i.e. why there is currently no seat post in it. So for us to actually finish building the bike, I had to convince him that it was going to be okay to clamp this frame around the seat tube, which you definitely shouldn't do, but he was willing to do it because I told him to do it. However, a product like this protects a carbon frame and allows it to go in a work stand. It's quite clever. 180 euros discounted to 115 euros. That is a hell of a lot of money. I think if, it, if, I, think if I had a bike shop, I'd probably get something like that. Because I'd be nervous of like cracking a punter's frame. I like these. They've sent us one each, which means now I have two. I cycled across America and had this pump fitted to my bike and I ended up using it like 16 times in one day. Well, six punctures. Every single one of my wheels was punctured, both the burlies. So we have one of <laughs> Wait, hang on. So we've got four, five, <laughs> six, yeah. We're very tired. So <laughs> this is a Silka Tatico road mini pump, an insanely well made mini pump. It has a flexible little cord which locks on to your Schrader or Presta valve, depending on which way around you want to put this little bit on the end. In my experience, you can easily get 80 PSI or even more out of this. My one has been through a lot and it's still in fantastic condition. This is excellent because now I have another one for my other bike and I have to switch them in between. It's 85 euros, reduced to 64 on the Silka website right now. Next up is Silka's sealant and replenisher. We have a lot of this for good reason. We want to make a video where we test the claims that are made on tubeless sealants bottles and marketing. This one, they claim six plus millimeter holes. Six plus millimeters is massive. You reckon we could take a drill bit to a tire and see if it actually seals that. They're confident in their product. This has got little filings of carbon inside it, which should help with the sealing. It must be poured into the tire during the install because the sealant will plug any syringe or valve hole you try to pump it through. I guess that syringe is less than six mil. Currently 40 euros reduced from 49. This is the 32 ounce version. There is an eight ounce version, which is for currently 14 euros. So yeah, it is expensive, but if you're doing it yourself, that's gonna last for absolutely pig in ages, isn't it? Two floor pumps for the studio. Um, I just looked these up on the website and to my amazement, 
These are actually the cheap ones. This one is the Pista Plus floor pump, which is originally 240 euros, currently discounted to 144. That's a bargain. This is the Terra floor pump, which is one of the cheapest floor pumps that they do. It's originally 170 euros, discounted down to 127.50. How much is the expensive one? 600 euros. I'm not even disappointed that it hasn't been sent here because I wouldn't know what to do with a 600 euro floor pump. eBay. <laughs> so I've used a lot of floor pumps over the years. Let's have a look to see what makes these unique. So the feet on them are definitely pretty solid. The handles are made of wood with lovely little silica embosses on the top. You obviously don't need that, but it suggests that it'll be, it'll live a longer period of time. Cheaper one has a much bigger gauge, and that's retro, man. That is super cool. It looks like it's off a, like, a 1930s fighter jet or something, rather. Really. More expensive one looks more like the, the sort of gauge you would get on a very large industrial boiler. This is a bog-standard floor pump that hits a maximum of 120 PSI. So this is the sort of thing that you buy for your house if you want a really fancy floor pump, and it'll pump up all of your tires to 120 PSI. This monster goes up to a whopping 220 PSI, which I'm going to hazard a guess is for track cyclists. So this is a proper track pump. Do people still call them track pumps? Pista means track. How does it? I challenge you to a duel, pick your weapon. Fastest to 62.5 PSI. Very <laughs> oh. 60. Okay. That wasn't 60. That was under 60. You won anyway. Ow! Ow! Victorious Jimmy Nichols once again beating Francis at bike challenges because that is all I live for. Going forward, if you see Silka in any of our videos, it is a sponsored thing and they are sponsoring this channel. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you very much, Silka. And we are going to look forward to doing some. Wait, 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 wait. There's one more box.